thank you for joining me this nugget as we look at the Microsoft Defender for Cloud, or what was formerly known as the Azure Security Center. Now, the Microsoft Defender for Cloud is a phenomenal tool that allows us to secure the various resources that we have, as well as get tips on how we can intensify the security of our environment. So here within the Azure portal to access this tool, all we have to do is to go to security. And from this section, you'd actually be able to see that Azure still calls it security center, but Microsoft has so far updated this. Now, why the change in them from Azure security center to Microsoft Defender for cloud? Let's take a look. So previously we had the Azure Security Center, which was a separate entity from the Azure Defender. And these two had separate tasks as far as security was concerned in the cloud. Now, Microsoft has combined these two into the Microsoft Defender for cloud. And for us to understand the Microsoft Defender for cloud, we have to look at it as a solution for both the cloud security posture management, as well as the cloud workload protection. Now, these are very important services within Microsoft Azure that allow us to look at how we secure the various resources that we have. So let's take for example, that we have a hybrid environment as shown in this particular diagram, where we have some critical resources on-prem and some endpoint devices and many other things that simply need to be secured. And at the same time, we also have some Azure resources that also need to be protected. And we simply want to leverage on the Microsoft Defender for Cloud to ensure that all these resources are protected. Now, using the power of Microsoft Defender for Cloud, we'll be able to leverage on these services to identify the various weaknesses in the devices that we have within our environment. And these could be weaknesses within our configuration or anything that is to do with the various software that we are running and these resources or services rather would be able to identify those weaknesses on these devices and provide reports to us as security administrators that simply inform us on what could actually be a risk and what should be done in order for us to mitigate that particular risk and this simply helps to strengthen the overall security posture of our environment and can protect the various workloads that we have from any form of threat that could jeopardize the security of our environment. So back into the security section of Microsoft Azure, under Protect, we have Security Center. So we'll simply go ahead and click over there. And once we open in here, you would realize that this seems to point us to Microsoft Defender for Cloud. And it's true, this is where we can actually get all the juicy information that can help us act on all those potential risks that could actually be lurking within your environment. And over here, we can see whatever is high, medium, low, etc. very similar to what we saw in Microsoft 365 Defender. However, if you scroll down here, you can actually get more information, etc. And here are a couple of notifications that been given with a description, secure score impact, and the subscription where this is actually happening as well as the severity. So let's pick the first one. And once we pick on this one, it will open and give us additional information that can be very helpful in remediating this particular risk. And over here, we have a description of this particular alert, which simply says we should designate more than one subscription owner in order for us to have administrator access redundancy. Now, this is very important in the event that maybe one account is actually compromised or we can no longer use it to manage this particular subscription, would we'll actually not be able to perform some administrative tasks if we don't have a redundant admin account that we're using for that purpose. So this is simply a warning that we have to take heed and take action in order for us to ensure that our environment is well secure. The remediation steps will also be included for us. This is how you'd manually go about remediating this particular risk. And there we can see more information regarding this particular lead. I want us to take a step back, click on security and go back into this area and look at additional recommendations within Defender for Cloud. So I'll click over there and in here, you can see more information. We can actually have the score with our security score over here. We can see more information regarding how much we have done in securing our environment and which areas still need us to pay attention to in order for us to ensure that the posture or the security posture rather of our environment is in a good state. So over here, we can see uh, that's our security posture and over here we have the various recommendations, okay? And let's just go back to our secure score again. We can see the various areas that have been taken care of in the meantime. We have multi-factor authentication, that's the score that we have. We have access and permissions. And these sections in green are simply an indication that these resources are in good health. However, each and every time we are seeing something in red like that, this simply means it requires our attention. So let's go ahead and just expand that and look at what exactly is happening within this section. 
And over here, you can see there are certain areas that still look to be green, meaning they're taken care of. And there is that one alert regarding the subscription that still need to be taken care of. So we have to ensure that that is corrected. So to remediate that, all we have to do is to access our subscription. So if we just type here subscription, there we have it. Now, if you have multiple subscriptions within your environment, definitely you have to ensure that you are aligning that particular remediation with the correct subscription. So I only have this one over here. So all I have to do is to open it up. And once it's open, I would simply have to look at the access control under IAM over here and look at whether we have additional users. And if not, we simply go ahead and click on add. And under add raw assignment, we'll simply open that and add the rightful user who actually has to be this redundant user in case of an emergency where we have to have an additional user account. So this is gonna be an owner, just click on owner over there and then we'll click next. And in this area, we'll not change anything. We'll leave everything as is, but definitely we have to select a member. So over here, let's go ahead and select, um, let's say Alan, they will select the user. All right, click on select. Once that is done, we just verify that the user has been added and then we can click next. All right, so in this section, we have to review that this has been assigned the right for all, that's the owner and the subscription that we're dealing with the name or the user that we have assigned this particular row, etc. If everything is perfect here, we'll just go ahead and click review, assign, and it should actually be added. Now, how do we get to know how many users in our environment have this row assigned to them? Now, just right here under row assignments, if we click over there and scroll all the way down, we should be able to see which users have this owner row assigned to them. We just assigned Alan Yang, and previously we had that administrative account assigned to it. So we should be good to go. However, there are many other features that we can actually make use of within this particular section, such as denying assignment or working with classic administrators, etc. Okay, this pertains to that alert that we got. There is another important feature that we can actually deal with when you're working with the Microsoft Defender for cloud, and that is the ability for us to add on-prem devices and be able to leverage all the features within the Microsoft Defender for cloud on those devices. In the coming nugget, we're going to look at how we can just achieve that within our environment. For now, my friend, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.